Yeah. I'm thinking of getting metal legs. It's a risky operation, but it'll be worth it. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 underappreciated comedy movies. I said, I, 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 I want the knife. For this list, we'll be looking at live action comedies that deserve more praise. What's a comedy that you think needs more attention? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Burn After Reading. The Coen brothers know how to make us crack up and drop our jaws, often in the same movie. Uh, Osborne? Osborne Cox? Yes. Uh, who is this? Um, this, um, is this Osborne Cox? Burn After Reading arrived a year after the brothers' best picture winning No Country for Old Men. While it has a lighter tone than that gritty thriller, it's no ordinary studio comedy. The film is about two gym workers who come across a CD containing what they think are confidential government documents, leading to a hilarious mess where nobody seems to know what's going on. Who are you? Who do you work for? CIA? NSC? Tuckman Marsh! With on-point performances from typically dramatic actors like John Malkovich, Brad Pitt, Francis McDormand, and George Clooney, Burn After Reading is a highly entertaining glimpse at the more ridiculous side of espionage. They, 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 don't, they don't think, they're pretty sure that he has no, uh, no brain function. Number nine, Rat Race. Looking for a relaxed and subtle comedy? Then stay away from Rat Race. There's only one rule. Are you ready? Here it is. There are no rules. Go! But if you appreciate comedies that pile on gag after gag, you might have a new favorite. Taking inspiration from It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, Rat Race stars John Cleese as a billionaire who puts on a cross-country race for two million dollars. Among the contestants vying for this fortune are Whoopi Goldberg, John Lovitz, and Rowan Atkinson. Mr. Polini, well done, sir, and congratulations. On behalf of Mr. Donald Sinclair, the Venetian Hotel and Casino, Rat Race is endlessly energetic, and for every gag that misses, there are several that more than make up for it. If we had a dollar for every laugh in Rat Race, we'd have a lot of money. Number 8. Grandma's Boy When it was released in theaters, Grandma's Boy was panned by critics and ignored by audiences. Woo! That game is fun! Oh my god! A new high score! What does high score mean? New high score, is that bad? What does that mean? Does that break it? But the Happy Madison Stoner comedy found a fandom through home media and is a great pick if you're looking to watch something truly lowbrow yet hilarious. Adam Sandler associate Alan Covert plays a video game tester who moves in with his grandmother and her two friends. Here's your new room, baby. <laughs> wow, Grandma, this is nice. This is good. Hey, uh, Sophie didn't die in the bed, oh, did she? No. Good, good, good. No, she fell out of bed and died right here. He also courts his coworker Samantha, who is played by Linda Cardellini. Grandma's Boy isn't exactly the kind of movie you'd want to watch with your actual grandma, but it's a quotable and uproarious experience. My grandma drank all my pot. That is great. Number 7. The Golden Child Eddie Murphy has starred in plenty of beloved comedies, but one that deserves more recognition is The Golden Child. Okay, Mr. Betts, you can come out now. Stop following me around. I'm not going to take your case. You're already on it. The first Murphy movie not rated R, The Golden Child, was released between the two Beverly Hills Cop movies. While it was a financial success, it didn't exactly click with critics. But even if Murphy doesn't seem like a natural fit for this story, which is about a social worker tasked with protecting a Tibetan boy with special powers, he still manages to convey his typical comedic energy throughout. This looks like a big joint. I'm serious, Mr. Jarrell. You lick it and smoke it. <laughs> I think it was two of these and you smoked the other one. The Golden Child feels like a mix between an Eddie Murphy movie and an old-fashioned adventure movie. Don't think about the plot too much and just enjoy the laughs and excitement. You've no idea who I am, have you? Yes! You're Sado Noopsy! <laughs> Number 6. The Burbs we all know Tom Hanks is an accomplished dramatic actor, but he first rose to fame in comedies. This is what I need, Carol. I, I need this. And you'll see, at the end of the week, I'll, I'll be a brand new human being. It's your vacation. Among the best of these is The Burbs, a great satire of suburban life from Gremlins director Joe Dante. Hanks plays Ray Peterson, 
a man living in the suburbs who has suspicions about his neighbors. Namely, he thinks they're members of an evil cult. You're chanting. I want to kill everyone. Satan is good. Satan is our pal. What proceeds is as unpredictable as it is hilarious. And Hanks shows just how committed of a performer he's always been. You might be looking at your neighbors a little funny after watching this one. Where's the lunatics? Us! It's not them! It's us. Number five, Accepted. While Accepted might be remembered for a scene involving Jonah Hill in a hot dog costume, it deserves recognition beyond that crude yet hilarious moment. Ask me about my winner! The movie stars Justin Long as a high school graduate who, after being rejected from every college he applies to, decides to start his own school. Hey, uh, just show of hands, how many people apply to other colleges? Everybody. Uh, okay. And how many of you got in to the other places you applied to? Does that sound completely illogical? Well, Accepted doesn't try to make sense, but it does try to make us laugh, and it more than succeeds. With memorable scenes and a great cast, including early roles for Hill and Blake Lively, Accepted makes the grade. I don't know, there were just a lot of things in my life that I thought were real that ended up being fake, so why can't the opposite be true? <laughs> Number four, I love you, man. A bromance isn't quite a romance, but it's more than a casual friendship. Arguably, no comedy understands this better than I Love You Man. Muscle Beach, half an hour. I will see you there or I will see you on another time. That was very confusing. I don't know what, if you're going to come or not. Paul Rudd stars as a man about to get married who realizes he needs to do something about the lack of male friends in his life. Hey, so you guys want to, um, like, get some grub or grab a beer or something? We're actually heading up to Joshua Tree tonight. Oh, yeah? Oh, what's going on up there? We're just doing this thing for Eugene, you know, kind of a bachelor party slash camping trip kind of thing. Enter Sidney Fife, played by Jason Siegel, who becomes Rudd's new platonic sweetheart. Took Andre the Giant a barrel of beer to get drunk, sometimes two. Hello, pretty lady. I'm the brother warm up to know. <laughs> Should we get a third order of fish tacos? Hands down, best fish taco I've ever had in my life. I Love You Man is both incredibly funny and sweet, treating male friendship with the kind of affection it's rarely afforded, and the chemistry between its leads is completely effortless. In other words, we love I Love You Man. I love you, dude. I love you, bro, Montana. I love you, Holmes. I love you, Brosif Goebbels. I love you, Machacha. I love you, Tico Brohe. Okay! Number three, pop star, never stop, never stopping. A great mockumentary needs to clearly understand what it's satirizing. Bar none, I am the most humble list. Number one at the top of the humble list. And pop star, made by comedy team The Lonely Island, feels so accurate in spoofing egotistical musical documentaries, it can sometimes seem genuine. Andy Sandberg stars as Connor For Real, a former boy band member whose solo career has recently taken a dive and who tries again and again to recapture his past glory. They gave it a negative review. They didn't like it? No, like it's a negative four out of 10. Positive 10, I assume. It. Like many pop songs, Pop Star is ridiculous, but also addictive. And its cast, including numerous musicians cameoing as themselves, keeps the groove going. Once you start it, you'll never want to stop it. So I understand why he, you know, did the whole Aquaspin thing. Touring is expensive today. Why you think I do the ASAP Crunchables? Number two, The Birdcage. You might not expect a comedy about a gay couple released in the 90s to go beyond stereotypes. You take your knife and you smear. Men smear. Smear, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Get the goddamn oh. pinky down. Oh. All right, make your fingers like iron, all right? Yeah, and stop trembling. But that's what happened with The Birdcage, a remake of La Caja Fall starring Robin Williams and Nathan Lane as a club owner and drag star. When Williams' son announces that he's getting married to a woman, he and Lane are forced to hide their true selves to appease his conservative new in-laws, played by Gene Hackman and Diane Wiest. Oh, she's traveled all over the world with me, but deep down, she's still the little girl from Grover's Corners. Yes, I'm afraid I am a bit naive. <laughs> Written and directed by the legendary comedy team of Elaine May and Mike Nichols, The Birdcage was a hit with critics and audiences and showed just how important it is to be true to yourself. Before we unveil our top pick, 
Here are a few honorable mentions. Three Amigos, a classic comedy starring Steve Martin, Chevy Chase, and Martin Short. I'm Lucky Day. I'm Ned Nidolander. I'm Dusty Bottoms, so and together we're... The Three Amigos! <coughs> Idiocracy. Mike Judge expertly satirizes the present and future with this comedy. I know she's bad right now, with all that starving bullshit. And the dust storms, and we running out of french fries and burrito coverings. Yeah. Blank Man, an underrated superhero spoof. Slap me around and call me Susan. Ah! Kung Pao, Enter the Fist, a ridiculous and hilarious spoof of martial arts movies. And that day, I vowed to find the man who killed my family. Can you help me? And why have you come to me? You are Master Tang. Your skills are greatly known. Undercover Brother, a hilarious homage to black exploitation movies. Blackness confirmed. You got so. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Bowfinger. I mean, I wasn't even sure that I could be a pod person, but now of course I'm enjoying it because you made the aliens come alive. It was like they were living inside of me. Bowfinger stars two of the funniest people of all time, Steve Martin and Eddie Murphy, and it boasts a hilarious premise. Gotcha, suckers. Wow, that is a catchphrase. Isn't that good? I, I just saw the poster. Let's be risky today. While that's not always enough to make a good comedy, Bowfinger absolutely clicks. Martin, who also wrote the script, stars as a low-level movie producer trying to get a ridiculous sci-fi thriller off the ground. So he gets the famous Kit Ramsey, played by Murphy, to star. The only problem? Murphy has no idea that he's in the movie and starts to believe that aliens are after him. He's brilliant. Murphy delivers some of his best work in dual roles as Kit and his brother Jeff. Bowfinger is a Hollywood satire that's still as fresh and as funny as ever. Jerry! Hi! I'm Keith K. I saved the world! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.